Hello everyone, this is Zane Game Arts, we're doing another boxing, another breakdown, another demo. This is Slime Rancher Deluxe Edition for the PlayStation 4. Now I got a bit of information to share about this edition, so please bear with me. Now Slime Rancher Deluxe Edition comes with the update version 1.16 already on disc, and all currently released DLC is on disc as well. Now, if this is a bit confusing when you look at the update history, it only says 1.11. This is due to that the company is no longer probably updating their update history for the PlayStation 4 and request that you go to their forums to see all future update information. Now, that's a little disappointing that they're no longer updating the history. You have to go to their site to get the information. But there was also a pretty large uh, size update. This update size was 1.2 gigabytes big and will take you to version 1.17. Now, if you notice that the, I provided a picture of the, the update history for that 1.17, I felt it was important to provide that information, and I'm a little disappointed that they don't provide that information now to PlayStation 4. So, if that, sorry if that's a bit confusing with that, that assortment of things. Now, 1.17 does a lot of tweaks and alterations and balancing to the game, as well as it adds a few little features here and there, like adds uh, removes the HUD feature so you can play around with no HUD, and just other balances and tweaks to the game. But, as I said, the on-disc version is 1.16 on-disc, as well as it has all currently released DLC on-disc. So, just hopefully that's helpful information. Now... Slime Rancher is a kind of a sim style, uh, uh, rancher kind of style game. If you're uh, familiar with like Stardew Valley, Harvest Moon, and so forth, you will be quite custom to this game. Now, story wise, you play as Beatrix. She is currently uh, kind of moving on. She wants to start her own ranch and just go out in the the wilderness and trying to name, survive off the land and so forth. She wants to get away from the hustle puzzle of the big city, if you almost, if you will. So you play as her, so there's no like character creating or anything like that, which is a little disappointing, but it's interesting to be able to play as a character. Though disappointing, you don't get really any kind of like character development from her. She's just a, a shell of a character you control, so that's a little disappointing there, considering it's supposed to be a character. But, as the game, as I said, it's a kind of a uh, Harvest Moon name uh, farm taken care of. But instead of a farm, you really got more like a ranch, and which is slimes. These slimes, you can gather them together, and there's all kinds. You feed them, and each one has a particular taste of what they would like to eat. And every time they eat, they will produce a pallet, a pullet. Uh, and then you take that to the market, and it has a particular market value at that current day. And you just, depending on what items you have and sell at that moment, it's kind of just balancing between what you can get as a slime and what you can sell at that time and what has the most value. If you're familiar with anything involving farming, like cattle or grain and so forth, you'll feel custom to the marketing system. It's very well done. I thought that was very well how every day it changes. I thought that was kind of cool. Now, you do progress through the game, and you unlock more content through just regular play. Eventually, you can unlock, like, a jetpack, sprinting shoes, more energy, more canister space, be able to carry more. Eventually, you can unlock the lab that allow you to expand more, provide more materials, and so forth. It's a slow, steadily growthing game. And it's very well done. It's very addicting to be able to gather up all these slimes and get unique ones and finding unique ones and trying to build up your farm to be able to feed them and get the food that they particularly like as well as discovering hidden treasures and so forth to make your farm better it's pretty very well done it's actually very intriguing the environment and the style of the game is pretty good simple but yet yeah, it works for the game i appreciate for what it is the biggest gripe i have with the game as i said with beatrix being a character you don't create but being a dedicated character there's no really no character development with her that's kind of disappointing because it just seems like she could have. She seems like she might be an interesting character. Also, the biggest gripe I have is the game is not very well optimized. If you're someone who's very particular about massive frame rate drops, as well as the game does run pretty hot on my PlayStation 4 Pro, this game might be concerning for some because. Even on PlayStation 4 or Pro, I can hear the console fan kicking up and just working overtime for this particular game. As well as I mean, lots of skipping and frame rate drops and so forth. So if that's something that bugs you as a particular person, that might be something to be concerned with if you're going to get into this game. That's the only huge massive gripe I have about the game. I Hopefully down the road they can do a lot more better perform uh, optimization and performance for the game. 
but overall my experience of the game even with the frame rate drops and so forth I still was having a great time with it I just thought like it was one of those games that every like every time you're thinking okay I'll quit now I'll just do this one last thing you go do that one thing and then immediately you want to jump over and like well I'll go do this one other thing what was meant to be an hour turns it turns into three hours and you're still wanting to play it's kind of just one of those addicting games that you just constantly want to improve your farm look at the market see what resources you can get find what the rare slimes you can add to your farm as well as you can try to combine certain slimes to make unique slimes that will produce two different kinds of pellets it's very well done though I must also add they have a chicken coop in the game where you can raise chickens I, I don't know if this is a bug or an, uh, just I don't know I really don't know how to explain it but I can't really like produce chickens to save my life like I don't know if that's something I'm doing wrong so I, I don't know if that's really the game's problem but it's like I'd take like several days worth and I'll only end up with like four chickens in my chicken coop but my garden can produce nearly 80 fruit in like two days or three days so it's a little weird on the production of the chicken so I found that it's better just to have oof, slimes that don't eat meat I just, that's just my experience with the game so that, that might be different it might be just a, a bug or an issue or so forth and it might be fixed down the road but I just found that very odd with the chicken coop just not being very optimized or useful in terms of me putting that much time into it. But overall, the environments are pretty. I like exploring and so forth and finding the uniqueness of the game. As I said, there's no real combat in the game. You do come across lane bad slimes that do hit you and attack you and evil slimes like the tar that will destroy your lane uh, your base and so forth and you gotta put turrets and so forth to keep slimes out and so forth but there's no like you killing slimes or fighting giant monsters or anything like that so like I said it's more of a uh, relaxing casual experience and it has different difficulty systems to it where you can have like adventure mode or casual mode and rush mode but this is also another thing I want to add. And it's not just particularly this game. It's just these kinds of games. They always have where you can build up so much money. But there's no real consequences. Like, uh, or like not reaching a certain value at a certain time. I always felt like like Stardew Valley and so forth needed like a taxation system. Now you can have it in a difficulty system where you can t disable that. But it, it was like every like 15 or, or a month in the game or a week in the game. You have to pay a certain amount of money for your property. And it just will allow that lower stress of make sure you're trying to maximize your profit as much as you can to sustain yourself. I just some kind of mechanic like that that can provide more concern and depth to the game. That's just a particular taste between me and these kinds of games. But if you're looking for a more casual experience, and these are kind of like Harvest Moons, Rancher, kind of just just sit down and just make your own base and so forth, and have your own like world, if you will. I mean, it's one of those kinds of games, and I thought they did a pretty good job. It's disappointing, like I said, with a few little irritations I've had with the game, but overall... I had a lot of fun with it, and I'm glad that Slam Rancher the Deluxe Edition comes with all currently released updates other than that huge 1.17, and it comes with all the DLC on the disc, so it's really good if you're looking into that. So, in my opinion, it might be worth picking up if you ever get around getting it, but be careful, like I said, it's sluggish, and it does run pretty hard on your console, so just... That's up to you what how you feel on that subject. So, like always, I will leave links down in the description if you're an Insta copy. And I'll see you guys in my next unboxing video. Bye-bye!